Welcome to my first lecture on electromagnetism. Electromagnetism is a wonderful natural phenomena that the human being have ever discovered. The theoretical development of the electromagnetism took several centuries starting from the 12th century. And now we are at the verge of new technology where the existing silicon technology uh, have come to an exhaustive end. And right now we have understood the uh, future technology is going to be governed by the electromagnetic theory. A wide variety of new and interesting technologies such as optical integrated circuit, negative refraction, refractions, uh, super lensing and uh, invisible cloaking, all those new and exciting technologies are going to be developed based on the electromagnetic, electromagnetism or electromagnetic theory. I always encourage all of my students to understand the electromagnetic theory from the very first day and from the basic concept of the electromagnetism so that if they want they can study these uh, new and incoming future technologies and they can contribute uh, in the study of and uh, the research of these uh, new technologies. However, before diving into the uh, details of the uh, paper or the subject of the electromagnetism, I do prefer to discuss a brief history of the uh, previous studies on the electromagnetism. So that is why my first lecture is dedicated to a brief history of electromagnetism. In general, the theory of electromagnetism starts with the uh, Coulomb's law. But before the Coulomb's law, uh, there were several studies that have been done so that the conclusive remarks uh, that is made by the Coulombs and finally that remarks came to know as the Coulombs law. So that is why first I am going to discuss those uh, a few of those several studies that have been done before the Coulomb. Our ancient civilizations were well aware about the lightning and the electric shock given by uh, the ill fish but at that time the reason behind these natural phenomena were unknown to those civilizations. But the magnetic materials uh, available uh, in the nature was available to us. So, th so those uh, naturally available magnetic materials were called the lodestone at that time. Although the magnetic phenomena were known to us because of the naturally available lodestone, but we have never considered any novelty on this particular property of magnetic uh, materials until 13th century when the Petrus Peregrinus discovered that when a magnetized needle was placed on a spherical magnet it would align itself longitudinally always. Tracing the line he showed that they intersected in two points on opposite side of the sphere. He called these two points as magnetic poles. After the Peregrinus experiment, William Gilbert have discovered that our earth is nothing but a giant magnet because you know that if you place a magnetic needle floating on a water surface then that magnetic needle uh, always orient itself according to the direction of north and south pole of, the, of our earth. So that discovery is after the name of William Gilbert. He also showed that the friction caused the attractive phenomena to appear in many materials such as we have seen that if you rub amber then uh, the static charge is produced but at that time it was no, not known as a static charge. He called that property uh, electric from the Latin word electrum for the amber. And William Gilbert was the first person who gave the idea of electric charge and the electric field. Although at that time uh, the terminology used for the charge and electric field were different but the overall idea on the electric charge and the electric field were given by the William Gilbert. After the discovery of William Gilbert, Stephen Gray discovered that the charge on an electrified body could be extended from that body. He found that the effect worked using some materials and did not work with others he was able to distinguish conductors from the insulators but for static charges obviously. Currents were not known at that time 
Of course, the term static was not in use until many years later when current was discovered uh, to be moving charges. It was found that by charging a liquid in a bottle and holding that bottle in a hand, one could obtain a powerful discharge. And that was first observed by E.G. von Kleist and published by Petras van Muschenbroek of Leiden, Netherlands. Hence, the capacitor were first known as Leiden jars. It was soon found that the liquid could also be replaced by a metal foil covering the inside of the bottle. And next is the Benjamin Franklin, who was elected as Fellow of Royal Society of London. He exploited the principle of conservation of charges and uh, he carried several independent experiments. Franklin postulated that a body contains equal amount of positive and negative electricity, which under normal circumstances exactly neutralize each other. Electrification is nothing but the separation of these two electricities, which he called positive and negative, with the implication that their sum is constant and remains zero. Now, by 1770, these facts were known to us. The first one is that there are two types of electricities or maybe one type that can be added to some material that means the positive charge or can be taken away from others that means the negative charge. Electricity is conserved. There are insulators in which charge cannot move and there are conductors in which charge can move freely. Equal charges ripple each other and opposite charges attract each other. So these are the facts which are known by the 18th century. And obviously after that Charles Augustine Coulomb who have concluded all those findings by his famous Coulomb's law. And this device which he invented is known as the torsion balance and this device is used to or used by the Coulombs to conclude by his famous Coulombs law. The experiment is very simple. You can see that a silk thread which is denoted as fiber over here is suspending from the suspended head. At the other end of this silk thread, uh, two balanced sphere is connected and one of these valence sphere is charged by a known charge Q2. And this sphere is placed close to uh, another sphere to which another known charge Q1 is applied. Now, due to the similar charge, the this the f first sphere deflects because this, uh, uh, this one is fixed at this uh, particular position and since this sphere is uh, tied with the suspended thread, so obviously this sphere will deflect along this direction. The angle of the deflection was measured by Coulombs by the marking that was available on the body of the torsion balance. The deflection of the sphere continued until the returning force due to the torque of the of this uh, fiber became equal to the force applied by the charge Q1. And after that, that torque uh, returned the sphere to its initial position. So, from this returning force, Coulomb was able to calculate this force and then he have concluded his famous Coulomb's law which states that that force is proportional to the product of the charge Q1 and Q2 and which is also inversely proportional to the square of the distance and this distance uh, that is the deflection was made uh, by, the, by this sphere that distance were measured from this deflection. After Coulomb, several experiments have been conducted on electricity and magnetism until Faraday who have concluded uh, with his famous Faraday's law and showed that the electricity and magnetism are uh, two uh, coupled phenomena. But it is not that that Faraday made his conclusion suddenly. There were several experiments before him who have conducted several experiments and based on those previous experiments and his own experiment, finally Faraday came to his conclusion. So, right now I am going to discuss a few 
of those previous experiments who ha uh, which have been conducted before Faraday. The most interesting experiment that gave the idea of static current came from a person who was not at all a physicist. That was Louis Galvani. Galvani was a biologist and he was doing his experiment or basically he was uh, dissecting a frog and with some sort of electrical machines he was doing some, some kind of experiments. He had a scalpel in contact with a nerve running to the leg of the frog. The electrical machine happened to spark. This apparently caused the frog's leg to contact. He found the spark in the air including the lightning caused the contraction. Along with that the metallic foil covering the muscles increased the effect. And more interestingly, the large response was obtained by touching both the nerves and the muscles with a metallic arc. And the larger effect was obtained if the arc was composed of two different materials. And this is the key point. Based on this key point, the first battery was discovered. And that discovery is done by Alessandro Volta. Volta read Galvani's work and reproduced his experiment. And he decided that the frog was acting just like a detector rather than a source of electricity. Following his idea and using Galvani's bimetal arc, he found that two metals in contact acquired different potentials. He concluded that the frog was no more than a sensitive electrometer. Galvani countered that the effect worked with a one metal arc as well. But Volta declared that inhomogeneities in the metal must cause the current and this is the first time the, car the concept of current appeared. And using the discovery of contact potential differences, Volta invented voltaic pile or the battery. He found that in a stack of metal plates of alternating type, the first and last plates on the stack have a potential difference equal to the sum of potential differences of each pair in the stack. And next was the Hans Christian Oersted, who was philosophically convinced of unification of the forces in nature. He set out to show that the electric electricity and the magnetism were related. It had long been known that the lightning would cause compasses to deflect. As soon as Worsted heard of Volta's discovery, he tried to get a galvanic current to deflect a magnet. In 1820, he published his results. They were immediately recognized as important and widely demonstrated. The unit of magnetic intensity is now called an Oersted. As you can see in these three experiment set, in experimental setup, where in the first case, uh, the current was generated uh, from this battery and this direction of the current deflects the, uh, this needle or this compass in this direction whereas if you alter or change the direction of the current so the deflection of the compass also is in opposite direction and from these two experiment the direction of the induced magnetic field was also suggested uh, which was based on the direction of the current and this is the law that have been quantitatively described by amperes Ampere showed that two conductors carrying current in the same direction, they attract each other, whereas if they carry the current in opposite direction, they reflect each, each other. And from this experiment, he also concluded that if you allow a current to flow through this coil as shown in this diagram, then externally the induced magnetic field will look like the uh, magnetic field of a permanent magnet. Uh, which is which will be available external to the body of the permanent magnet as shown in this diagram also and from there he also concluded that each molecule in a permanent magnet has a closed current loop because if this closed current loops as you can see in this diagram 
are oriented along a particular direction so this orientation of this tiny current loop produces the magnetic field along this direction whereas in the case of non magnetic material these current loops are oriented random randomly so therefore random orientation of these tiny current loops cancel uh, the effects of each other and finally the resulting magnetic field is absent for a non magnetic material and his third conclusion was that the magnetization is the alignment of the molecules with an external magnetic field which means that as he concluded earlier that each molecule in a permanent magnet has a closed current loop so when you place this material nearer to an external magnetic field like this then the randomly oriented tiny current loops uh, becomes aligned along the direction of the magnetic field as shown over here and the resulting direction of this tiny current loop as shown uh, in the second diagram that all of these tiny current loop have been oriented along the direction of the external magnetic field that means along this direction as a result this material become magnetized similarly if you alter the orientation of this uh, magnetic pole then the orientation of the tiny current loop will be will also be in opposite direction as shown over here in this in this case also the magnetization of the material is done but in comparison with the first case the generation of the magnetic pole in this case is opposite with the in compared with the first one another important discovery was the biasovert law this law governed the force between a long state conductor and a magnetic pole the biasovert law showed that the magnetic effect which means the field strength is proportional to the current in the wire and inversely proportional to the perpendicular distance from the point of measurement to the conductor that means this one the magnetic field b at certain distance r due to the current carrying element i dl is proportional to the current carrying element that means i times dl and the sin theta and the sin theta is the angle between the direction of the current and the direction of the observation point that means this angle i will discuss this biasovert law coulomb's law in greater detail uh, later in this course and these are the other important contribution came from different scientists all around the world and first of them is the laplacian which states the potential in vacuum and i will discuss this uh, laplacian in this due course next one is the poisson law poisson distribution poisson distribution is also uh, uh, a lap basically laplace is a special case of the poisson distribution so poisson distribution states the potential due to the electric charges when the electric charges is equals to zero then that distribution became the uh, laplacian so i will discuss in this uh, due course next one is the green's function the green's function takes into account uh, several source point that means the effect of the electromagnetic theory when there exists a larger number of sources in this due course green's function is not in our syllabus next one is the gauss theorem or gauss law this is the one of the most important law and i'll discuss the gauss law later and obviously the ohms law which is the most important law you also uh, very much familiar with this ohms law from your school level physics and the most important person is the michael faraday or michel faraday he introduced the concept of field although i told at the beginning of this lecture that the william gilbert was the first person to introduce the concept of field but at that time the concept of field was not been so convincing uh, until faraday he also states that the magnetic action takes place to the direction right angle with the direction of the current that produces it he built the first electric motor and first transformer he demonstrated that the carrier of electricity all had the same charges proportional to their atomic weight and by now we know that they are the electrons 
he first identified that light is an electromagnetic phenomena and speculated that light might be a wave-like manifestation of electromagnetism. And next, the most important person who was the James Clerk Maxwell. Maxwell is the person who took all those discoveries uh, uh, done earlier in the field of electromagnetism and combined them and finally he discovered that when the dynamic electric field and, and, the, and the dynamic magnetic field combine they produce the electromagnetic wave and this conclusion goes with the Faraday that he already made for the light that the light is nothing but a wave -like, like manifestation and now these four equations are called the Maxwell equations although none of these equations are discovered uh, by the Maxwell himself uh, other than this this displacement current this one is the Lenz or Faraday's law because the Faraday's law discovered the um, induced electric field due to the uh, time rate of change of magnetic field and Lenz law introduces this negative sign um, as per the conservation of the energy and Ampere's law states the uh, orientation of or the induced magnetic field due to the steady current flow and when Maxwell have combined these uh, induced electric field and the induced magnetic field he found the electromagnetic wave where this displacement current D relates the polarization of a material with the external electric field all of these things i will discuss in this due course so thanks for today